Political passions are sure to reach a boil as summer turns to fall and midterm campaigns kick into high gear. But one year after the Tea Party was born, does this loose collection of a Americans angry at their government still carry the same punch? Candidates with Tea Party support in Tennessee, Michigan and Kansas all lost primaries this week to more traditional Republican candidates. Two of those Tea Party candidates had the endorsement of former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Ari Melber is a correspondent with The Nation, and Andrew Langer is president of the Institute for Liberty. Andrew, how would you describe the current state of the Tea Party? Well, I think people are very, very fired up, Cenk. I, I think in the end, folks are really looking at the fall elections, and uh, the Tea Party activists are doing what activists all over the country have traditionally done. They've gotten involved in campaigns. And what's wonderful about this season, what's been wonderful about the Tea Party is that it's brought us a plethora of different candidates from which to choose, and uh, folks are out there supporting the candidates of their choice. So I think that they're as fired up as ever, uh, and you're going to see that uh, with big national events that are going to be happening in the next uh, six to eight weeks. Andrew, let me follow up with you then. It was it wonderful to lose an 11 point lead that Sharon Angle had over Harry Reid and now she's trailing by seven? I mean, that's got to hurt. Well, I, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think, you know, that's the case. You know, in any case, when you have a, a primary that happens, you have uh, candidates that rebound after a primary, uh, certainly, uh, um, you know, you've spent weeks with, with candidates uh, fighting with each other, and it's hard for parties to come back together after that. Plus, you're talking about someone who is running against the sitting Senate majority leader, uh, and that's always a, a tough thing to do. He's got plenty of backing behind him from traditional Democrat constituencies. Uh, money talks in campaigns. And he's got a lot of uh, a lot of finances behind him. Uh, Ari, it didn't seem that tough to run against Harry this time around. Uh, I hear that Politico is reporting that Democrats are actually trying to help Tea Party candidates in four different states. I don't know if that's true, but that is the report. Have you heard anything about that? And do you think it's a good idea for the Democrats to help Tea Party candidates? Well, I think it's always dicey when you go try to play uh, in the other party's turf, and it can look, frankly, a little sneaky. That's just one article, uh, and I don't think that is the big story. I do think what we've seen here is the use of the language and the organizing influence of Fox News around what are basically traditional conservative activists with some new branding and some new ideas and a real economic message, and that's clearly worked. I think people would be making a profound mistake to cherry pick a few races where challengers aren't winning. Remember, the challengers that we're talking about started out with very low odds, so the fact that they've won any races, or you look at Rand Paul and people who, who really did upset the Republican establishment, that means they're already far ahead of where these kind of insurgent groups usually are. So I think the Tea Party remains very powerful. To the point about uh, Senator Reid, I think most analysts would tell you at this juncture you're better off not being associated with the governing majority in Washington. So the fact that he's pulling through says something about his tenacity and also for folks who want to wonk out, uh, Nevada has some quirky rules about what it takes to get on the ballot. So it's more than a two-way race and that also redounds to Reid's benefit. Uh, all right, now Andrew, look, come on. We reported earlier in the show, uh, she talked about uh, turning lemons into lemonade when talking about a young girl who might, in a hypothetical situation, who might have been raped by her father. That's that's crazy talk. And how can that kind of crazy talk help the Republican Party? And the polls seem to indicate they're not helping. Well, I, I, Cenk, I don't think I said that, uh, that uh, the kind of talk that uh, Sharon Engel is saying does help uh, uh, the Republican Party. I don't think I said anything either way about the, what kind of a candidate Sharon Engel is. Uh, I think uh, Ari has just pointed out several very important reasons why uh, Harry Reid is doing so much better than he otherwise might ought to be in the polls. Uh, you know, he's got, uh, he's got a lot of momentum behind him for all sorts of reasons. No, uh, it's because she's Looney Tunes. I, it, look, come on, everybody knows this. He was in a desperate hole. It's a great gift to him. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. You're giving a great gift to the opposing party, the Democratic Party, by running people that are more to the right. Look, uh, let, Andrew, let me follow up with you. Look, at the end, Bush and Cheney were incredibly unpopular. And now the strategy yes. is to go further to the right. How does that strategy make sense? Cenk, I think you're confusing uh, a whole host of issues with why Bush and Cheney were unpopular. Bush and Cheney were unpopular with the left for a variety of reasons and with the right for a whole host of other reasons having to do with when Bush and Cheney stopped being conservative on issues like fiscal issues and size of government. And with that, that's where the Tea Party message has always remained strong. The Tea Party is about size of government. The Tea Party is about uh, government spending. It's about taxes. It's about the intrusion in everyday life. That's what that movement has been about. That's what it remains about. And that's why it will continue to be formidable as Ari said himself.
Yeah, well, Ari, let me finish up with you then. Look, uh, if the Tea Party... I got two quotes, <laughs> quoted twice in one segment. <laughs> All right, now, if the Tea Party actually challenged government and they said, hey, you know what, we're going to take on corruption, Wall Street, Washington, whatever it is, then I might be on board too. But it looks like they're driving the Republican Party further to the right, as you see with all these different candidates. Do you think politically that's a smart idea for Republicans? Well, I think politically they're getting by right now on what some people would consider a bait and switch, what others would say are the sign of the times, which is what you're calling extreme right wing activism, and what I think in, in Ms. Engel's case sometimes is very inappropriate language. I, I'd strongly condemn that. I would hope Andrew would as well. Uh, also gets conflated as an outsider, go get Washington mentality. And when that's the message, it may seem right wing, but when it plays out as being tough on Washington, I do think they get away with it for a little while. One of the questions here is, well, is the Tea Party over? And anyone will tell you the party's never over until you feel the hangover. And that's going to come after Election Day when they have to govern with some of these folks who may not actually agree on very much with the traditional Republicans. And that brings over the larger question, which is, is this party about taking on the ruling class in Washington? Or is it about selling that and then going there and making deals with big government conservatives. Well, when the party is over is what I'm going to get to next in my take. Ari Melber and Andrew Langer, thank you so much for a great conversation. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Cenk. All right. Now, look, I like to make predictions, so here's a nice controversial one for you. The Tea Party is the cancer of the Republican Party. If they were actually fighting against corruption in government, it would be a positive movement, as I just explained. But if all they do is drive the GOP further and further to the right, they're going to kill the party. 2010 might be a slight bump up for the GOP, given the circumstances, but that'll only hurt them more in the long run as, be, as they become convinced that radicalism is the right answer. After 2010, the long, sad decline of the Republican Party will begin, and we will look back and say it started at a party, the Tea Party.